Welcome everyone. We are uh, extremely glad that we have made it here today alive in the studios of Retail Detail. It's the first step towards normalization of our lives post-corona. We are connected at least with the speakers. We are in particular grateful for Adyen for powering this uh, summit, this webinar. And I would say stay tuned because next time we will uh, try to connect with all of you, with the audience as well. So just for your uh, for information and for uh, your concerns, this is a corona proof uh, setting. Everyone is vaccinated or tested. So we are here really corona proof. And again, thank you all for being here with us today. We are in the first place here to discuss the results of the uh, market monitor. Uh, Q2 results came out and our press release indicated already this morning that we have consumed uh, more than uh, 500 million compared, compared to uh, Q1 last year. So the timing is very important because we're definitely post-corona. So it is absolutely an indication for the future online shopping um, experience or what we can expect, what consumers will do. And of course, um, which is also a very interesting evolution, we will see that uh, services have again taken an important step in our spending behavior. Uh, this is really good news for both the travel and, tra travel and entertainment sector which were uh, really suffering uh, almost one year and a half. So um, we will hear from uh, GFK in depth their uh, analysis. And this will explain us, you know, what uh, they will focus also what drives this consumer to shop mobile. And of course, this is the mobile summit. Eh? Um, we are not only here to discuss the facts and figures of the market monitor. We are here for the 10th time to discuss evolutions and trends in M-commerce, in mobile commerce. And why is this? Because the M-commerce is really the engine for the growth of e-commerce. And just to give you an indication, in the coming years, this growth is uh, predicted by many experts to, to be on a level of 68%. That's really amazing. So we are very proud today to share with you here the latest insights in M-commerce. And uh, we know that consumers are spending more and more time on their uh, smartphone. So the experience on the smartphone is ever really very important to, to know your customer, to understand them, to know what you have to do to satisfy his needs. So um, we also know that from studies, they have shown that this last step in this buying experience is very often uh, determining the experience of the consumer. Is he happy? Is he satisfied? Is he very happy? Is he proud? Is he like, mm -mm -mm? So, and when we're talking about this last step in this buying experience, we are talking actually about the payment experience. So, we are very happy that this uh, webinar is powered by Adyen and that they will share together with us some more insights on this very last important step. And uh, so after we have heard the market monitor uh, analysis by uh, GFK, we will uh, give the floor to Adyen, who will discuss in detail with uh, Poppy Bank Contact Company and um, uh, Peconic together the the last uh, insights on, on their experience. And they're all part of this wonderful uh, big commerce community, which we too have been seen uh, growing in the last uh, months following this Corona vibes. Eh? So we are welcoming our new partner, Bukaru, but also new members, Profilec, Lens Plaza, uh, Brenger, Open Bau Machines, Photo Gallery, To Join, Vidya, Ufone, um, Electromat and Lamp Twist, all wonderful new members, and I hope they can enjoy all those benefits of a wonderful community. So again, uh, I, I think if you want to tweet right now, use the hashtag uh, BCMS2021, then we can uh, follow up and we can answer and we reply and interact on the spot. That makes it easy for everyone. And again, um, I will give the floor now to... Uh, Freya and Caitlin from the team of JFK. We all know very well uh, the ladies from JFK, but maybe it's good that they will uh, introduce themselves shortly for those who are not familiar with uh, the JFK team. Thank you very much. 
Yes, uh, also from our side, from GFK side, welcome to this summit uh, and good afternoon. Um, my name is Kathleen Dottremont. Uh, I'm senior research expert at GFK and um, I will be presenting today together with my colleague Freya, um, who's senior executive at GFK. Um, and together we've been working um, around three years now uh, or for the third year in a row on the on the e-commerce market monitor together with e-commerce. Um, and today we will have a look at uh, first and for all the, the facts and figures uh, of this Q2 um, update for the market monitor, but as well uh, at some consumer insights on uh, e-commerce um, and, and, and the trends after this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So let's start with the facts and figures. Um, and first a word about uh, what, what the e-commerce market to monitor is exactly. So it's already a study that runs for the sixth year in a row now. Uh, it's commissioned by e-commerce, but sponsored by uh, National Lodre, uh, Adian and e-commerce uh, and performed by, by us at GFK. Um, it's a very unique uh, combination uh, of data sources. Um, what we actually do in the market monitor is track the online and offline sales uh, within 20 uh, B2C uh, markets and categories where we will actually track what is actually purchased by consumers on and offline and how much uh, money they spend on it, which devices they use, which payment methods they use to, to, to shop online. Um, and to cover the uh, online purchases and spending, we use um, three data sources. First and for all, our market insights data, where we get actually the, um, the, the scan data from the retailers uh, for the tech and durable categories, uh, measuring exactly on a continuous basis what is sold on and offline. Um, for the FMCG categories, we use our consumer panel database where we have a household panel of four, uh, 5,000 households scanning every day their on and offline purchase, purchases within FMCG. And then for those categories not covered by one of the first two sources, we complement the data uh, with our uh, quarterly uh, online ad hoc uh, study. Um, there has been an update at the beginning of the year. So previously we covered 18 markets. This year we covered 20 markets. So gaming and gambling as well as national transportation have been added this year. Um, and as well, we had a review of um, some other categories to make sure that we still cover everything uh, um, yeah, in the study with the study. As well, what we did this year as well, we took um, yeah, we took the possible the opportunity of the update we performed to update as well uh, the payment devices and methods because the market monitor was started five six years ago. Um, E-commerce evolves, so we had to update those as well to make sure to still uh, track all relevant trends within the market. So, what about e-commerce in Q2 2021? Perhaps first a flashback to the, uh, the second quarter of 2020, which was actually the lockdown quarter, the first lockdown quarter. Um, it started already the last two weeks of Q Q1, but it was actually the most visible, of course, in, in, in the Q2 data where all shops are closed. Um, people couldn't go uh, outside or not far outside. Um, a lot of people started to pay very much attention to their health and to, to do sports. Um, for distraction. Um, very soon within the quarter, the DIY stores and the gardening stores could open again, but still no fun shopping was allowed. You had to go by yourself, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, And only at the very end of Q2 2020, traveling was uh, allowed again, but we saw a lot of people didn't do it. If we compare it with this second quarter, the second quarter of 2021, of course, it's a very different picture. Eh? Shops were never closed. Um, you could travel very soon uh, within the second quarter and gradually uh, more and more restrictions were lifted and, and we, could, we were allowed to do gradually more and more and more during the second quarter. So, of course, this has an impact as well on the, on the numbers we are reporting. Eh? Um, so, we see a big increase in number of purchases done online. And we see actually a stable trend versus Q2 2019 in absolute spending. However, keep in mind how we added those two new categories um, in the beginning of the year. So if we take them out to be able to make a right comparison, we see actually that number of purchases stayed stable 
um, in comparison with the same quarter last year. Um, and we have a slight increase in online spending um, versus Q2 2020, this uh, second quarter. If we then look at the split between products and services, because I don't know if you remembered it from pre previous summits, but uh, the product categories were really booming online, but service categories like travel, uh, events were really hurting uh, because of the, 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 the pandemic that was um, happening these last few quarters. We see actually that uh, purchases of product stabilized slightly, decreased online, but we see as well an increase of uh, the services uh, purchases uh, and spendings uh, versus the same quarter last year. So services are picking up again. However, again, we have to keep in mind the Togunu categories that were added, which were actually services categories. Um, so if we, we yeah, if we have a look at that, we see still an improving trend, but slightly lower than um, if we look at total market data. So of course, it's very different category per category, um, how, they, uh, how, how the different categories recover after this pandemic, um, where we see actually, if we see at absolute numbers uh, spending, uh, so, so millions spent online, we see that, for example, clothes, shoes, food, um, toys, health and beauty all picking up again and, and even increasing further in absolute money spent online. Other categories like computer and accessories, uh, household electronics, etc. are stabilizing or slightly uh, decreasing in money spent online. There's yeah, two uh, explanations for it. First of all, a lot of people bought a lot of those things like computers and accessories in Q2 2020-20 because they were obli uh, obligated to work from home and, and had to, to, to purchase um, all of their equipment to be able to do it. But as well, and uh, if I move to the next slide, we see as well for the first time since the market monitor started actually a slight decrease in number of online buyers, meaning people went back to the physical shops because yeah, it was kind of a relief that they could go back once, but as well, still events, we were talking about Q2, so until June, events were still not allowed, parties were still not allowed, all those things were still not allowed. So it's going to the physical shops is actually one of the few things people could do, uh, spend time outside with friends, family. Um, so that will have an impact as well. Eh? And as well, if you see clothes, um, household electronics, those are typically categories people like to see in the shop, like to experience in the shop as well. And there you see like uh, the online share, so the part of online in spending going slightly down for those categories. Um, then you have the services categories where we see clearly that travel is picking up again. Um, it's still not on the level of pre-COVID, logical. Uh, but it is picking up again, so I think that's for sure good news. Um, as well in online shares, those are yeah, stable or, or, or grow, growing again. Um, and you see this as well if we look at the division between categories, uh, between product categories and, and, and services categories within the total market, where we saw traditionally pre-COVID actually that the biggest part of money spent online went to those so services categories like traveling, event tickets, etc. Um, we saw in the second quarter last year that, of course, the biggest part of money spent online was products because we couldn't travel, we couldn't go to events, etc. You see it now as well picking up again. So now 37% uh, is going to uh, those services categories. And then I think it's time to give the word uh, to my colleague Freya, who will tell you more about all the payment methods and devices. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, so now that uh, we know what happened, uh, what we want to focus on is payment method and devices as we are talking about mobile summit and we want to know how much it is growing at this moment. So if you take a look at uh, how many people are using each payment method, then we have uh, this method. I only took top three, uh, but there are more options I, as Kathleen showed in the beginning. Um, but we see that half of people, actually a little more than half of people use bank contact, which is uh, the number one, followed by credit card and PayPal. But what is interesting is the share of online spending. Uh, so what you see in the graph is uh, what uh, share of the online spending per uh, payment method. 
Um, so as you see in the beginning, it's really from the beginning of our study, meaning 2015 Q1, you see that uh, it was more or less stable, whereas uh, Bangkontak was going up uh, slightly, but then it actually made a switch uh, when it was uh, COVID. So people were uh, not traveling as uh, we saw before. Um, and then usually travels are uh, categories that people are using a lot of credit cards and that was impacting a lot. And also we also saw last year that uh, people are buying a lot of garden stuff and little purchases. And this was more often done by uh, bank contact. So this is a switch that you are seeing and then it's continued to have in Q2 2021. But what you could notice is that the trend is maybe going back, uh, but we're not sure yet. But this is something we have to further investigate in the uh, current quarter because we are in a very exciting um, period where um, it is post-COVID, but not actually like 100%. So this is something that we have to keep an eye on in the future. So now that we looked at the payment method, let's take a look at the payment devices. Uh, so it's the same slide, but now with the payment device. So most popular one is laptop with 51%, uh, followed by smartphone. But as you notice, uh, it's with the green um, letter. It means that compared to Q2 2021, uh, 2020, sorry, uh, it increased significantly. So it was 32% uh, one year before, and now it's 35%. And that clearly shows the trend that Sophie mentioned in the beginning that mobile commerce is increasing. And this is more clear if you look at the uh, online spending share. Um, so if you look at the yellow line, that's a, a smartphone. And then we started, um, let me just take a look at this one. Uh, we started with the 3% and uh, Q2 2021, it's 17%. Um, so we are definitely seeing the increase in a smartphone, uh, whereas other things, um, so tablet is uh, stayed a little uh, stable so from seven to eight and uh, fixed devices are decreasing slightly. Um, so if you look at the top one, lab, Laptop is 52 uh, in 2015, and now it's 44, still the first one, but you see the decreasing trend, and you can also see the same trend for the desktop. And I just combined it. Um, so what you see on the upper side, so red one is a laptop and desktop, and you, you clearly see the decreasing trend, whereas uh, if I combine smartphone and tablet, then it's increasing uh, over time. So this is what happened, and uh, this is not only, um, we not only answer what happened, but also answers why it happened. And this is where we bring some consumer insights um, from, uh, from our uh, bi-weekly screener. Uh, and the question that we wanted to ask, what drive the growth of M-commerce? Because this is important to understand to start with, but at the same time, it's in there's uh, important to understand what is a driver at the moment and what, what can we do better. So what we asked in our screener is why people use different devices when they shop online. And we see clearly, uh, if you see uh, the upper corner, um, then people say that um, desktop and laptop are, are most used for online shopping because they are suitable for big purchases. Whereas if you look at the tablet, a third column, or the smartphone, this is only 6%. So there's a clear uh, perception that big purchases has to be done in a fixed devices. Uh, where, and also it is easier to compare big different deals on these devices, which I think could be improved. Uh, I also saw uh, one of the news that there is an app that compares the different prices um, and then this could be also a game changer. So this is something maybe we can change in the future because this is just a perception and of course it's a matter of us to change it as well. And if you look at the smartphone, it uh, came across a good deal while scrolling. So this is kind of confirming our assumption that people are buying more on smartphone when they are uh, yeah, impulse shopping. And I just want to zoom into this one, a uh, smoother user experience while paying, because this is one of the uh, big focus I think a lot of payment um, companies are focusing on. 
And I wanted to uh, focus on one function at this moment because time is limited and we couldn't go uh, too deep about it. But uh, one of the things I found it interesting is uh, when I pay, for example, on smartphone, uh, my uh, device remembers what my payment detail and I use it. But at the same time, it could be scary for consumers because it remembers your financial uh, information. So I wanted to know how Belgians feel about it. And this is what we found. So 58% uh, of online buyers, so Belgian online buyers, said that they are using the function. And when we ask uh, when, they're, uh, when they use the function, um, but only when those shops uh, that they trust, which is 45%, so almost half of them, we ask what is the criteria that you use that this is believable or trustworthy. And then most of them said, like, it's well known or is it something that I used before? But at the same time, I wanna I want you to focus on the uh, fifth one, which is uh, the shop has a trust mark because you have to start from somewhere. And then one in, uh, four, one in four consumers, online consumers said that trust mark, like e-commerce trust mark is important. So this could be a great way to get uh, the trust of a consumer to begin with. And then they will go into, okay, I use this web shop because of Trustmark and then I can use it more and more in the future. And yeah, as I said in the beginning, I was curious about the financial safety and then how consumers feel about it. So I look at the different groups, depends on their answers. And what is interesting is that uh, even those people who says, yeah, I always use it, it doesn't matter which web shop, more than half of them said that I am worried about my financial security. So even though they're using it, it's still their concern. So this is something they have to be, um, that has to be tackled on. So uh, to finalize it, I would like to sum up uh, some key takeaways. So first one is that online continues to grow. So even though we have uh, increased this uh, less dramatic than Q2 2021, where everything was closed, so that was dramatic. But at the same time, increase is still uh, growing uh, and travel and event sectors are coming back. So we are hoping to see more uh, in Q3 and Q4. And make sure that you are presenting the right touch points because uh, it's important to focus on uh, physical shops now that they're going back, but at the same time, it does not mean that online should be neglected because now people are combining two uh, channels and depends on how you optimize your channels, uh, you might capture more consumers to your shop. And the fourth one is that you have to offer a right payment methods, look at the trend between credit card and a bank contact. We, we have to see how that goes and think about your category as well. Uh, does my category buyers buy more bank contact or credit cards? So this is something to look out for. And also it has to be fit to the need of the consumer that people are using more and more smartphone and um, it has to be mobile friendly and so on. And also the financial um, aspect that I, I mentioned with the uh, consumer insight. This is something that is always in the consumer's mind and you have to assure them that it is uh, very safe to pay. Um, so the, I just want to uh, mention uh, slightly uh, that we are having an Insight Week in GFK and um, I think you can all register if you want to have more insight about other stuff. Uh, but other than that, I would um, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Freya and uh, Kathleen. We, we learned a lot. Uh, we know about, more about the use of the smartphone. It is absolutely on the rise. But we also know why uh, people are using the smartphone for particular products or services and impulsive behavior. Very important for our audience to, to, to match this with, with their own needs. Eh? So um, I think uh, for, all the, for everyone who is participating today, we will share the presentation at a later point. So again, thank you very much. May I now uh, invite the team of Adyen to take the, the stage and uh, just uh, so we can talk uh, more about um, yeah what, what, the, what the future is about mobile payments because we, we, 
JFK already discussed how important this payment is, not only the device, but also why you use it. So um, thanks again, Julia, Thibault and Alfredo, welcome to the stage. Maybe first of all, maybe a brief introduction, who is who, so that the audience knows exactly to who they should uh, ask the question if they have one, please. All right, I'll start. Hi, Sophie. Um, so my name is Julien, and I'm responsible for the Belgium market uh, for ADN. Uh, I'm Thibaut. I'm the CTO of uh, Poppy Mobility, which is a car sharing and a micro mobility company operating uh, here in Belgium. And my name is Alfredo Prieto, working for Bank Contact Peconic Company. I work on the business development team and looking after all partners in the sector side. Excited that you all are here and that you could make it here in the studios of Retail Details. So uh, great to be here with BCommerce. So, Julia, I'm going to be straight, you know, how do you see this evolution going on in the next uh, 10 years? Uh, where do you think the mobile payment, mobile, mobile payment will go? There's a lot going on uh, coming from China, America. We are curious to hear what, what uh, Adrian thinks about it. Yeah, of course. So um, there were a few interesting things said uh, by uh, JFK. For example, they were speaking about smoother user experience. Uh, they were talking about interacting between channels. I mean, today this is all about what the customer wants. Uh, it's not about uh, selling online, selling in-store, selling mobile. It's, it's just serving your customer, right? And so um, everybody has a smartphone today uh, and everybody wants to pay with that. So we've seen that uh, over the last uh, decades. We've seen that the first mobile transactions were coming in. And, and we can say that today, if we talk about uh, like pure players or merchants selling online, we can see that sometimes yeah, mobile represents the biggest part of their volume today. And, and more and more, we see uh, new businesses uh, uh, coming in, which are uh, pure mobile players, for example. Um, and, and that's why I'm very happy to be today on, on stage with uh, Poppy and, and Bank Contact, um, because Poppy is one of these uh, good examples. Um, so, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, so uh, I will start with you, Alfredo. So uh, since uh, you, you're part of uh, Bank Contact, can you can you tell us what what, what you think about the the mobile trends and uh, what's your view on it? So mobile um, in Belgium, particularly, I think is solving few issues that we used to have. Uh, so um, if we look from a consumer perspective. It is smooth a lot. The thing was mentioned that uh, we do what, we, what the consumer wants and, and we try to improve their uh, user journey. And it's certainly improving the, the checkout process. Now, before uh, we had the 3DS, which is still with us, and, and the DigiPass with mobile, we removed that uh, from the checkout and it's improving then dramatically the conversion rates for the consumers. Uh, today in Belgium, uh, we can see that in bank contact, of course, out of 100 transactions, 80% is already done with the mobile, 80%, which is really, really impressive. And we think that this trend will continue. Car will stay with us for, for quite some time, but we think that mobile will take a, a big chunk of the market. All right. Um, so talking about mobile, um, uh, we, we, there was a new product launcher <laughs> earlier this year, which is uh, WIP. Can you, can you tell us more about it? Yes. Uh, we well, it stands for Wallet Initiated Payments. So names sometimes are a bit tricky. Um, is one of the latest products that uh, Adyen, of course, has developed and, and is already putting it out in the market. And is basically a car on file mechanism. Um, the beauty of it is that it ro already removes the initiation of the transaction. So the consumer, I will put it graphically for the audience, the consumer will authenticate themselves once at the merchant where the card details will be stored between Adyen and the, and the merchant, they can authenticate themselves via mobile or via card. Then all the rest of the transactions that are happening later are without authentication. Merchant initiated, which is fantastic because you are again removing part of the flow on, on the uh, SCA authentication. So at the end, the conversion there is cl close to 100%. Uh, and this is benefiting the consumer and benefiting the merchant. All right. So if I understand you, that means that the customer just only pay once the first time and then automatically uh, he doesn't need to Indeed. identify himself every time. Even no need to pay, Yeah. register and authenticate themselves once. Uh, and then okay. 
authentication is when you uh, do the DigiPass uh, authentication uh, from your bank with yep. your card, or you uh, scan a QR code uh, with your mobile app. That's the authentication that you will do once. And a good example is, uh, of course, Poppy, uh, that you put your card details once. You don't need to have a trip with Poppy. You just register your card details. And then when you have a trip and you finish your trip, automatically the, the, the money will be asked to the car uh, of, the, of the consumer without them needing to do anything, which is fantastic. Right, thanks. So that leads to my, my question for you then, <laughs> Thibaut. So um, yeah, for Poppy, uh, you are pure mobile players. So it's very important that the yeah, customer uh, have a seamless checkout. Um, so can you tell a bit more about Poppy? We explained a bit, but can, we, can you maybe elaborate on this? And, and why is this new feature uh, very important for your business? Well, you know, when we talk about uh, payments for Poppy, we really need to have in mind our, our registration funnel as a, as a car sharing and micro mobility company. Uh, usually our, our customers d discover Poppy in the street when they see uh, one of our vehicles. And so they will register in the streets. Uh, I mean, you're on mobile, you're not going to have your DigiPass on you. You know, we need really a seamless experience as, as you mentioned. Uh, and so th that payment experience, uh, well, now with 3DS and, and a, a very native feeling uh, with Payconic, uh, you know, like you, you can really register really fast because we also, I mean, we also ask a lot of information to customers, uh, like their driving license to, uh, to be able to drive cars, etc. So the payment is one of the step that is the most uh, critical for us uh, to to do it well. Uh, it has to be to work really, really well. And the second, the second important part for us in the registration as well is that uh, we have to have a safe environment for for our customers obviously uh, to store their payment details uh, on, on the file but also for us uh, we also uh, operate you know like almost uh, 2,000 vehicles uh, expensive goods on the street so we also have to make sure that uh, that, that the payments that we take are legit and that uh, we protect ourselves as well uh, against some of the fraudulent patterns. So, so that's uh, that's what I would say comes to mind first when we talk about mobile for us. It's registering on the app and with a seamless and safe experience. All right. Um, and I remember, um, so, so Bank of Tech Whip is quite new, and so uh, at the end we implemented that, uh, I think, very uh, early this year or late okay. last year. Um, and I remember uh, we were in contact and uh, you were operating in Belgium only with, with credit card at the time because mm -hmm. uh, you needed absolutely this functionality to offer the customer this uh, one-click or on-demand uh, um, service. Uh, and I remember uh, asking you, hey, uh, would you be interested to to test uh, actually and be one actually one of the pilot merchants for for Bank Contact Whip? And can you can you explain us uh, what what uh, this has uh, bring to, to 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 Poppy in terms of uh, user experience and, and and conversion? Can you explain and, and elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, uh, and and thanks for uh, inviting us to uh, to try that because indeed it was actually about the right time for us because we switched from a platform to another uh, that we redeveloped entirely from scratch ourselves, so which means that we really have our our uh, our hand on the product. And so one of the things Puppy wants to do uh, as much as we can is have the best product market fit locally. So in Belgium, it means, for example adapting our offer to businesses to small businesses because there's like tons of businesses but like also in terms of payment of course you don't do uh, e-commerce in belgium you don't sell in belgium if you don't have uh, bank contact or, or in the netherlands if you don't have ideal so you really need to have uh, bank contact uh, but so far bank contact would work with uh, you know sepa payments uh, which have I mean, some of the some of the challenges of SEPA are. I mean, th these are can be can be expensive transactions, and so we were really glad to be uh, able to uh, to try a bank contact on a on a whip basis. I mean, uh, to have a bank contact card on file, and uh, so far it's been a, an, an exceptional experience because uh, we have 60%, uh, and that actually matches the the numbers of uh, of GFK. Um, so we have 60% of our new. Uh, new registrations who go through a bank contact instead of a, instead of a credit card. Okay, so, so that means that uh, only with credit cards, uh, know that you have bank contact, you can actually see that six of 10 
uh, users are using yeah. bank contact. So definitely. where before they didn't really have an alternative, right? No, indeed. And I, I mean, there, there's definitely people who, um, I mean, they have both, but they still choose more contact. Yeah. And there's also people, uh, I think, especially among the um, among the young people who just can do without a credit card at all. Yeah. Uh, of and, course, and, you and probably just, have an audience as yes. well uh, that maybe does not have Indeed. access to. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. and I, and I think our conversion is higher because we improve the product and and the registration experience. But but I think the the bank contact uh, experience is also playing a role here, uh, and certainly among our our younger audience. And so we can see that there are actually uh, so on, on the new people coming in that six people out of ten are going there but uh, do you think actually that you can also bring more people now on your service thanks to that yeah yeah that was definitely uh our, our first thought as well when we when we saw that because uh uh yeah there's definitely part of the audience that we didn't have before or that we had but in, in smaller proportions uh thanks to uh, a lower barrier of entry basically yeah. all right very good um yeah maybe one question for you then uh, uh, alfredo so uh, I, I i explained the intro that uh, uh, as an acquirer for bank contact we we implemented that feature um can you tell us about your feeling about integrating uh, together with adian what has been uh, the added value uh, of Adyen for you as a, as a partner? Of course. It's a, as, as you know, we have a very smooth partnership with Adyen uh, from day one. So from day one, you always uh, ask for the latest products and, and, and the latest trends. And, and we maintain this healthy conversation of uh, pushing us. No, we pushing you and both haven't reached, uh, I think, uh, the Belgian market because uh, thanks to this collaboration, comes innovation, no, and then the, the WIP uh, and uh, the Caron file and all the products that we are launching are coming from all these conversations with our partners, like the ones that we are having. So we we're very happy, as you know, and we hope to, to continue this collaboration for many years to come. Same same ways for for end. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I don't know if there are um, questions in, in in the audience today. Yes, uh, we see there are uh, some uh, questions coming in. Uh, I think for each of you, one. So we talked a, a little bit already, Julien, about how Adian looks uh, about the future. But there's a particular question on innovation. What do you think about innovation and payment? Um, we know we can pay already with the thumb, with uh, like Apple Pay. But like, will we be able to pay to pay by a wink, for instance, like? Like this, you know, and uh, <laughs> no, but but this is a question coming in from one of our uh, participants. Yeah, so of course, I mean, we don't have a crystal ball, so <laughs> we we cannot uh, uh, tell you exactly what's going to happen. But what we see trends, and 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 the nice thing is that thanks to our uh, platform that enables our merchant to process um, any type of payments, mobile, online, in store via one integration, we can see that a lot of merchants are actually trying uh, to do new new things. Uh, and we see that more and more, uh, I was talking about convenience uh, today. This is what merchants are trying to do. We see more and more merchants having less and less stocks actually in their stores and creating user uh, experience center, they call it now. So actually the customer is coming, is trying out uh, the service or the product. And if he likes the product, he's buying on site and then he gets the product delivered at home. This is we think, at least what we see, um, uh, big merchants are trying to do and with quite a big success. So, uh, uh, of course, there are a lot of initiatives and I think it's very important, again, to make sure that uh, uh, you you answer um, the way a customer wants to pay today. And before you could say to a customer, if you want to shop before brand, this is how this is going to happen. No, actually, this is the other way around, I think. The shopper will tell you this is how i want to shop uh, with your brand i i understand so uh, it is going to be important more and more for to bring the online experience into the shop you know to have that uh, experience uh, if i understand you right and to work more on yeah but we, whole, we see that know? already there it's what for example we see uh, what we call endless aisle so yeah. kiosk where people yeah. just uh, the product is not available in the store they will just uh, uh, go on the website and then pay uh, with a terminal. We don't know if the terminal will still be there, but uh, um, we see initiative more and more with QR code, etc. Uh, happening. So, yeah. 
Then thank you very much. Yeah, we have a second question for Alfredo for a bank contact Payconic company. Um, we are happy to to hear that uh, with this Payconic development, actually bank contact brought the debit card accessible for a new generation of online shoppers eh? those generation which do not have the credit card and with the payconic it's not just a debit card it's the it's an application mm -hmm. and it's so convenient and this is a question of one of our participants what other innovations does bank contact have you know in petto for the next month or what can we expect uh, i wouldn't say next month because we yep. all know it takes <laughs> years to develop such thing but what can we expect for the next year Years. So, of course, without disclosing any confidential information, what we are um, doing at Bank of the Company, as you very well say, is listen to the market. And what we are trying is to bring uh, as transparent payments in all the use cases that you face in your common life. Like uh, we have it already uh, when you fuel your car, when you go to the supermarket. And what we are looking uh, in Bank of the Company is to have those as frictionless as possible meaning you go to the supermarket, you go out like it happens already in the US, and then you, you don't have to do anything else. Your uh, transaction has been triggered automatically when you lose the supermarket, when you leave it. So we're looking at all those use cases on a common life to make them frictionless, invisible payments, and that happening real time. No, is uh, Those are the two innovation technology and having payments as quick as possible. Those are the drivers uh, that we are looking very, very closely. Thanks very much. That actually confirms a bit with Julian says. I mean, it's, it's the customer that's king, you know, he's Always. he or she is king or queen, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, and, and it's up to all the merchants and all the web shops and all the, you know, um, entrepreneurs to listen to this customer and see what he what, what is friction and how can we remove the friction. And and this is also the friction will bring us innovation because it's, it's those friction that that or the, 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 the threshold, you know? So we have to, to, to work the other way. Okay, thanks very much. And the last question for Poppy Mobility for uh, Thibault. So, you know, we saw this, uh, this possible, also the step is a, is, a, is a product for a real young uh, people. These are the, 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 the people with less, less risk averse, you know, and they wanna try something new and together you, you have become part of crime. And we say the debit card, which made possible through Payconic and then a product which is really for a, for a new generation. Um, and the, the wonderful thing of Poppy Mobility is, of course, the integration. Eh? The customer experience with this uh, online payment is possible. Um, so there's a question of one of our partners. So what are your next plans? What are, what are you, you know, where, what's, what's, what's next behind this, uh, you know, after this step? Yeah, I mean, definitely what we're uh, looking at uh, currently, what we are investigating is uh, maybe adding even more uh, d different payment, uh, different payment methods uh, that would fit even to the market. Uh, like we, we're already, uh, we, we, we made an experiment, for example, with uh, EcoShex, for example, in the past to buy, uh, to buy uh, packs of credits. We're looking at um, offering different uh, Types. Um, I'd like to. Um, yeah, it, it's hard to to go too much into details uh, with, without unveiling too much. But but we we want people to be able to to pay uh, for puppy with uh, really different ways. Uh, not necessarily paying for one trip, but also like having different passes, different packs, uh, and we want to go further uh, into that direction. And also uh, the experience, but uh, so I mean the the overall user experience uh, is something we want to uh, con constantly keep on improving. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a mix of a, a lot of things because we're active. Uh, like we don't do enough on the e-commerce front, and that's what I I, I keep uh, on pushing uh, here. Uh, I mean at Poppy is that uh, we we're doing good at uh, like. You know, like uh, putting these or customers in contact with or uh, vehicles, but uh, we have to go even further in terms of, in terms of e-commerce and and in terms of partnerships even that we could have with uh, you know other brands or uh, other uh, partners in the ecosystem of uh, of e-commerce e in Belgium. Thank you. That is uh, clear. There's still a future, huh? and if you 
or this was also the first year that we included transport in the market monitor because we all realized that so many consumers are paying online for their uh, transport. That might be a train ticket, it might be an Uber, but it might be also the puppy. So uh, this, these facts and figures are included. So uh, good, good, um, good idea. Um, and of course, to, to close this off, um, you know, Timo, are you driving yourself with with the with the, with the puppy? Yes, I, yeah. Actually, I live in Brussels, but uh, after the train, uh, I took immediately a, a, a puppy scooter from the from the station to to the office, then to the office to here. And, uh, and we talked about the, the customer experience, and that's the area where you want to improve mm -hmm. or other payment uh, devices. But what about other ways of transportation? Do you see uh, that also? So, so, um, so we had uh, so so currently we're we're only doing uh, car sharing and, and kick scooters, uh, but yeah, we're investigating maybe uh, maybe through partnerships, uh, maybe other modes of transport. There's a, a trend in the in the industry, which is that almost every micro mobility player goes towards a more of a mass approach so mobility as a uh, as a, a service, service. Um, and so i think we're going to have to play uh, by these rules as well um, and also puppy is actually also a good player in this game since uh, we're really trying to integrate ourselves into the the, the mass of other other players public and private uh, for example wim uh, is, is a good example they integrate our, our scooters so that's really uh, where the opportunities are. It's uh, it's it's ourselves offer a good experience that is connected to to other partners, but also be part of a of a larger mobility ecosystem. The sky is the limit, I hear. But anyway, so just to you know to be sure, Julia, how many times do you pay a day with your uh, mobile phone? I actually don't have a credit of a card on me anymore. Okay. My, 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 I can show you. Yes, I do. I'm lying. I have always a backup card here in case uh, the terminal would not support uh, uh, mobile payments. But otherwise, I'm, I'm only paying mobile uh, these days. And you, uh, Thibault? Well, uh, I, I'm still uh, I'm still paying with uh, with uh, contactless cards uh, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> I must admit, uh, but but it's interesting because I I lost my wallet once. Uh, it was actually uh, at my place for uh, for for one week uh, in some dumb place. But but I, I could pay with my phone uh, actually, uh, and and I could do without a wallet for a week uh, without any issue. And so you learned how easy it was, no, Alfredo? What about you? Indeed, for me, it's an average of at least one transaction per day. And normally, I, I take the occasion to do my shopping when I'm on the go. So whether it's a tram, car, sometimes even traffic jam, if I'm not moving, of course. Uh, and I try to, to always purchase where mobile payments are offered because it's so easy that I, I don't have the DigiPass with me. Glad to be all with the uh, same minded people. I personally used the uh, first time I'm Apple Pay in 2013 in a Whole Foods store, and uh, I was so excited. I always love new experience. So, thanks again, all of you, um, for uh, our. I think these are all the questions, or do we have any other more a question? Okay. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for uh, having us, Sophie. So, uh, thank you guys thank for you. joining me on the stage. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Okay. Thank you, Julien, for, uh, for being here with us and uh, to have this uh, great uh, chat with Alfredo and uh, Thibault. It's uh, great to learn where we are. Uh, that we are all witnessing this this evolutions and this constant change. So um, I would say again, thank you very much, and we will. Uh, we hope to 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 see you later. Uh, we have a few upcoming uh, other webinars. We have a, a webinar next week on marketplaces, and the week afterwards a webinar on uh, marketing without cookies, which is also very important. And of course, we have uh, October thirteen our. Uh, most important uh, show of the year, the, the Big Commerce Awards, where Adrian will also be there. Eh? So um, thank you again for uh, hosting this year together with us. And uh, see you all on October 13. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.